So I've been tr using artificial intelligence uh, to analyze Rika questions and give us answers just to see what they're like. I have already taken the time to answer this question in uh, the, it's in the subtest of one videos, I believe, I think. Uh, but it's but I did provide an answer to it. But l let's let's see what the what, what AI does with it, okay? And it's use the information below to complete the exercise that follows. So this is about differentiating instruction. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just read this to you, and then I'm going to copy and paste it into an AI program just to see uh, how it handles things. All right, all right. Well, let's go. Uh, prior to having students read a textbook chapter on tree classification, a fifth grade teacher divides students into small groups and gives each group a set of labeled photographs and diagrams of a particular type of tree, for example, prines, with each group focusing on a different tree. The students examine their photographs and diagrams, write down as many characteristics as they can about their assigned tree, and then present their findings to the whole class. As students share their ideas, the teacher writes the words and phrases on the board. For example, pines have cones, have needles. The needles grow into clusters. The needles are green in both summer and winter photographs. It also introduces new terminology. Trees that have cones are called conifers. The teacher then conducts a guided whole class discussion during which the students identify shared characteristics by more than one type of tree, for example, having cones, and sort the trees by characteristics. Conifers equal pines, firs, hemlocks, spruces, cedars, and the large. The large. That's Monty Python. Very few people, I think, will get that. Examine the task using your knowledge of reading instruction, write a response in which you describe how the teacher can effectively differentiate instruction with respect to this activity in order to address the needs of the student in the class who are English learners. Oh, there's a twist. Explain why the instructional strategy you developed would be effective in addressing the needs of these students and promoting their development of vocabulary, academic language, and or background knowledge. Wow, we, we got a lot of stuff to do here. Be sure to relate your response directly to this activity above. Okay, so I'm going to take this uh, question, drop it into an AI uh, program, and I'll show it to you. And uh, let's see what it comes up with. Uh, just give me a minute, and I'll be, I'll be right back. All right, you won't believe this, but I'm completely dumb. I did not have the microphone on when I recorded this, and I have to narrate it. So look, I copied all of this uh, text that you saw in the original question, and um, I used a, I used a, something like Notepad to uh, to do it. And um, then uh, I go over to HyperWrite right here, and inside of uh, HyperWrite, I go over to this flexible AutoWrite thingy, and then I just pasted uh, pasted it in. And I said a whole bunch of other stuff in here, like uh, the, uh, the first time I did this, um, it gave one answer that was really good uh, to uh, the first question. And then I was babbling here about opening Microsoft Word. God, this, you know, this almost feels like Mystery Science 3000. Okay, so it generates the text. And uh, let's see what's going to happen next. Uh, I do something. I think I'm trying to figure out how to how to make Word uh, less wordy, and so I copy that to the clipboard, as you see right there. And uh, what else do I do? Wow, I waste a lot of time. Okay, so I'm pasting this in. No, I'm not wasting time. I'm actually working. And uh, so I'm pasting this into Word, and you can't see it because it's off screen. And I only took two questions. This is a third question, but uh, um, I didn't bother with it. I uh, just looked at the first two because you really need to rely on the on the um, sample uh, answers uh, that they give uh, in order to do this. And so this is all English learner focused. And I try to zoom in and uh, make the print bigger for you. I was moving something out of the way. Uh, yeah, there you go. Gosh, I can internet pretty good, huh? And then I read this to you, so let's do that. I said, for the teacher to effectively differentiate instruction for English learners in this activity, they can provide additional support by using visuals or having additional support materials written in the student's native language. Additionally, the students could pair English students uh, 
with native uh, English speakers to ensure that all students understand the material. So I pause there in order to say that I don't think this activity is any good because it's not teacher uh, dominated enough or teacher led. That's a better way to put it. This is direct instruction. All right. So you got to have teacher modeling first and they're talking about all kinds of other stuff. And um, so in here, it's all about differentiating instruction. So a big part of that is going to be teaching those students by themselves in a small group. Um, and then explain why that kind of direct instruction will, will help. And so you see a lot of things about vocabulary and academic language and background knowledge and stuff. So this means that you need to have a lot of modeling. It'd be good to bring in uh, examples of, um, uh, of conifers and cones and pine needles and pine cones and all the other stuff And in addition to the vocabulary. But l this is how they handle this. So look, it's direct instruction and then, so here it is. Since the activity and textbook chapter require knowledge of vocabulary that's not often used in everyday speech, cones, needles, clustered, and will likely be unfamiliar to English learners, the teacher should, look, lead a discussion with them beforehand. So that is direct instruction. It's also kind of ability grouping in a way, uh, in which the teacher uses the visuals, photographs, diagrams to identify and activate their related background knowledge and explicitly teach more basic but essential academic vocabulary they'll need to complete, complete the activity and comprehend the textbook uh, chapter successfully. The teacher should reinforce new vocabulary by having the English learners enter the words into their science notebook along with the notes and drawings about the word meanings. Here comes the justification. The strategy would be effective in addressing the needs of English learners because it uses visuals to support their understanding and activate their background knowledge explicitly. Uh, it teaches essential vocabulary to support their learning and reading and reinforces new vocabulary through discussion and writing. So, so look, it starts with uh, teacher uh, modeling. And then the part I'm highlighting right here uh, is about how the students are doing like uh, guided practice or guided slash independent practice. And then you just justify that. And they love visual uh, stuff. They love multi-sensory stuff. That's really what they, what they dig. Uh, and, and what else can I tell you here? Um, I can tell you that that's a good w practice for you to look at writing that uh, justification. Use that as a model. Um, and then it, I, I go over the evaluation. The, this assignment addresses the competencies in domain four. The response, this is about vocabulary. The response fulfills the pr purpose of the assignment by describing an effective strategy for differentiating instruction for the target students and explaining why the strategy would be effective in addressing their needs. So it's also about differentiating instruction for English learners. The response reflects an accurate understanding of vocabulary development and effective strategies for differentiating vocabulary instruction for English learners. The support for the writer's argument is found in a clear explanation of the types of words that should be the focus of the, uh, of the discussion. So look, they love it when you pull out examples from the uh, description and show how you're going to explicitly teach them. So this is an explicit direct instruction model, all right? And clearly, this is what they value. So um, it's a, it's it's a matter of, of of finding some. And these are the short answer short answers, by the way, uh, of finding um, just very quick kinds of uh, of activities that uh, that you know have ability grouping uh, and have special instruction for those students. Now, this says in here that you may be asked about students who are advanced learners or struggling readers or English learners or students with special needs with a learning disability. So you know, we need to do a little research on that. Um, go in, and read about um, how you would do vocabulary activities with advanced learners, uh, with students with uh, special needs. Look up you know, mild uh, special needs maybe, uh, or uh, issues with uh, dys dyslexia or uh, or, or something of that nature, uh, or short-term memory issues, or, or what have you. But it's, it's always going to be something about um, doing something special for that group for vocabulary development in this case. Uh, and then they go on to describe uh, what they mean by um, advanced learners and struggling readers uh, in um, the, the second paragraph on there. If you want to pause this and read it, go ahead. But... Um, 
it, it really just is a matter of finding activities that would be uh, easily described for for these students and uh, I may um, do a uh, less do a, a a video on each of those uh, groups, but uh, it's going to depend on uh, on time. Um, so what I'm looking for then, and why I'm going over all this, is that I want to see how the AI handles it, and it handles it poorly. So it's not bad that it didn't do a good job of it, because you can see what not to do and why not to do it. Um, and this is uh, that opening in that essay is not teacher led enough. It is not teacher modeling. Uh, in fact, uh, it talks about pairing students with English learners, and you're kind of pawning off the student uh, onto or, or students or English learners in this case on a native speakers, and that's not uh, part of direct instruction. That's not explicit instruction. And I, I think in here, what I what I was trying to do is uh, just to give you the opportunity to see the um, the essay uh, in its complete form. So if you wanted to, or pardon me, the question so that you can see it uh, in, an, in its complete form. Uh, and, and there it is. Um, but um, again, it, this does not fit their model uh, because it talks about, uh, it doesn't talk about grouping the students together and giving them a special lesson or special attention. Um, it does not have them do anything by way of uh, uh, using uh, notebooks and a vocabulary book, for example. And, and it's just talking about um, giving them materials in their native language. And, and I, don't, I don't think, like in their notebooks, if they, if they label them both in English and Spanish, uh, that that would be a crime or anything of, of that nature. But again, it, this has to be uh, teacher-led. And unfortunately, this one just is not teacher-led uh, enough. Um, I can't imagine what I was talking about here, because <laughs> it pretty much spells it out. Um, I, I, let, me, let me pick it up from, uh, from right here, where it says, By having visuals and additional support materials, the English learners uh, will be able to follow along with the activity. Uh, and and be able to contribute to their own ideas to the discussion. No, they can't. That's not how this works. Um, this is like just giving the students a bunch of stuff, uh, some assembly required, go figure it out. In this model, in this answer, you know, the teacher is the one who does the teaching. It's not a, another student. It, it's not someone who speaks their native language. It is... Uh, a teacher who is doing differentiated inst instruction with uh, with pictures and diagrams and everything else, you can use the word realia, R E A L I A, realia, which is bringing in real objects, uh, like the cones and the needles and and uh, clusters of uh, what what have you, so everybody can get sap on their hands and it'll be all sticky, and then pretty soon it's chaos. But Maybe realia isn't a good idea, but the rest of this all talks about the students applying what they have learned uh, after direct instruction, and, and presumably the teacher, because it's a notebook, will check it. And you could even put in there, you know, have the students do it, and, uh, put put it in their notebook, and then have the teacher check uh, for comprehension. But this this answer here is way way too loose uh, and uh, not so good. So this is the second answer. It has two paragraphs. Um, uh, and, and it's no better than the first. And I, and I even put lines through this thing because it was not good. Uh, so let's take a look at this one. In order to effectively differentiate instruction for English learners during the activity described, the teacher can best provide instruction in the native language of the uh, English learners in the class. This can be done by providing written instruction in the native language as well as uh, translations of any new terminology during guided discussion, no, this isn't not, no, no, because this is just handing them instructions in their native language and saying, all right, have at it, and that's not the way we, uh, Rika does stuff. The way Rika wants things done is that you have to explicitly teach, and uh, after you have explicitly teach, then the students do guided practice where they try it alone, and then uh, you check it. And then the last thing is uh, independent practice, where they do try to fly on their own, and then you assess their their progress. But no, this uh, the um, AI did not do well in this one. 
the inst this instructional strategy would be beneficial for English learners as it would allow them to better understand the activity and its objectives. No, it wouldn't, as well as providing them with the support they need to participate and understand the content. No way. There's not enough direct instruction. You're just handing them stuff and, and some assembly uh, failure. So I went back and I just pointed out the differences again, you know, just to reinforce uh, everything that uh, you, you need to have the setup in such a way that uh, there's actual differentiated instruction happening. You group the students together, you uh, do special instruction for them, you use a lot of uh, diagrams, photographs, that's what I'm circling in here, and, uh, and, there, and therefore, I don't know, if, my, if this mic is picking up my dogs, they're freaking out because my wife is home and it's dinner time, so you're going to hear them go a little nuts for a while, but, uh, but they should calm down in a little bit. So I think that's really about all I had to say uh, in this uh, little video. I think I have about one minute left uh, as I'm looking at a part of the screen you can't see. I guess here, just make sure that you have a really good conclusion to every one of your essays uh, that has uh, you know, multi-sensory techniques, explicit teaching, um, and, uh, and it reinforces whatever content it is that you're teaching. In this case, it happened to be uh, about um, pine cones and needles and, and uh, conifers and, and what have you. And, and uh, this is not good. This paragraph here, this whole thing is not good uh, in terms of RICA um, because, again, it is not uh, explicit instruction. It's not differentiated in special instruction. Um, and it is not teacher-led. And, and it doesn't have any, you know, visuals or multi-sensory techniques in there. And, and, and it puts the students in a position to teach themselves, you know, just like here, you, you, here's what you got. Uh, here are the instructions and uh, off you go. So no, nope, that didn't work. Not successful. So there you go. Whatever the AI did for this one, it did not do it well. So this would not pass. No, it would not. Uh, so focus on this question, focus on that answer, and, and uh, you'll, you, should be, you should be good to go. All right? Well, thanks for watching this. It was fun to make this one. And, uh, yeah, so, so far, it's uh, one for one. One, one hit, uh, one out. Let's see what happens next.